Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. We have a lot happening to tell you about in this program. We're beginning right here at the Palace Verdes Art Center in Rancho Palace Verdes, where they're getting ready for the 32nd annual PV Homes Tour. This year's tour has three magnificent homes in Portuguese Bend that will be showcased for the community to see. You're not going to want to miss the event. It is Friday, April 20th and Saturday, April 21st. Also, we're going to travel to the Wayfarers Chapel in this program where they are getting ready for their art show. So there's lots happening. We're going to begin by stepping inside the PV Art Center. I like the Art Center because there's a lot of a creative work. The Palos Verdes Art Center is where children and adults come together to celebrate the arts. The nonprofit community art gallery and school has served the community for more than 80 years. And for 32 years, one of the center's support groups called The Circle has put on the annual PV Homes Tour, raising more than a million dollars for art education. What I love about the Homes Tour is the incredible dedication of all of the Circle ladies. They work so hard and what they do for us is phenomenal because all of the money that they raise goes towards the educational programs for the Palos Verdes Arts Center. Let us know a little bit about what happens with the Homes Tour. Well, it takes us about a year to put it on. And the first thing that happens is you have to find the properties. And we prefer three. Uh, we're very fortunate this year that we have three properties that are close together. So we're setting it up tour style. And that means that you'll have a bus with you the whole way. The first home is really the most historic home on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And that is the Vanderlip Villa. And Katrina Vanderlip, who is the granddaughter of the man who built that beautiful spot, uh, and also the curator of, of this exhibit. She is the hostess of the home. And the home speaks of the personalities. It was a beginning. It was supposed to be eventually an Italian villa. The research was exquisite. And you will see beautiful color. You will see reflections of personalities. And you will see that it's not the grand big home that was originally thought of. And that was because simply World War I stopped everything. And so it became the villa. Uh, it is uh, filled with Renaissance, Italian Renaissance furniture, uh, some rare pieces from China, and it's exquisite to the eye. The second home is a small house right above the water in the Portuguese Bend Beach Club, another private gated area. And that is owned by an artist and an author. And you will see in that home museum quality, tribal art, and folk art. And she has this exquisite spot above the water and from her traveling all over the world. Uh, and, and by the way, her study of indigenous people and tribal people, you will see these, this exquisite collection. And then, of course, the third home is contemporary. And it is very large, very, very open to the sky, open to the ocean. And it's the house that really occurs because of the healing of this lady. And by the way, I'm going to tell you that the architecture gets your attention, but the theater is the inside of the house. And that's when you hear the story. And that, that is such a fabulous opportunity. And I'm going to have the opportunity to travel with you to this home. So are we ready to get going there? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And they're waiting. You're going to be on the homes tour. How did you get into this and, and what are you looking forward to? Oh, gosh, how did I get into this? Um, Ann Buxton and Gail Johnson asked me uh, if I would be willing to do it. And I said, yes, this is my yes year. So it was on the spot, spontaneous, and I'm excited to do it. Well, your house is absolutely beautiful. When people come through, how are, how are they going to move through? <laughs> from the front to the back in a big circle. Give us a sneak preview of what they might be seeing. A lot of water, a lot of blue, um, Palos Verdes uh, native plants, and uh, the inspiration point. 
And speaking of inspiration, there's so much art here. It's all you. So just share with us about like just where we are right now. What's going on here? <laughs> this is my cabana room, and most of the pieces on the wall up here, uh, the the mermaids, the Pacific Islanders, are all created in the ceramics class at the Art Center in the Independent Studio class with Jeff. I went through uh, a couple of big health scares and was unable to do muraling, so I started by carving small tile just to keep my mind occupied. I've worked uh, in art for over 40 years in this area. A lot of people probably will remember me from their faux finishing or uh, design work. I do a lot of different types of things. Why are you giving back to the Art Center? I know this is important for you. I love people. I love running into old friends. Um, I ran into my best friend from high school and roommate from college at one of the home tours. So it's, it's an opportunity to reconnect with our neighbors, to get to know people, and to spread art therapy. This art center is an anchor in this community. With this beauty all around you, you're bound to attract artists. And they needed a place. They started in the Malaga Cove Library. And after, I think it was about five or six years, a group of women who wanted to support it came together and said, we'll call ourselves the circle. And I think uh, the cause that we believe is, of course, the art and the artists in this community, but it's the education that the Art Center provides. We now take art into public schools on the peninsula and in the South Bay to 7,000 students. What do you like about art? Um, well, I like it because it, it's pretty. <laughs> I like coming here because you can see um, what people have made and besides yourself and how they see the world. You want to see what kind of talent we have up here on the peninsula, please come and check it out and maybe you'll find something that you would like to add to your own collection. Of course, if you're a member of the Art Center, you get a discount still? Absolutely, yes, this is one of the perks. So we really love to have people come and join our membership because you don't just get a discount in the store, you also get a discount on your classes. The popular homes tour has already sold out. The community can attend the Circle's pre-tour fundraiser on April 18th, where they can shop for collectibles and enjoy the latest exhibits, showcasing the Olmsted brothers, the Vanderlips, and artists from Portuguese Bend. For more information, log on to pvartcenter.org. There's more to come here on Around the Peninsula. Coming up next, we're traveling to the Wayfarers Chapel where they are getting ready for their annual art show. Stay with us. Hello everyone. Today we'll be sharing with you the second public safety awareness tip from Lomita Station. Don't be a victim of identity theft. The Department of Justice reports that 4% of U.S. adults, including over 1.5 million Californians, will be a victim of identity theft this year alone. A person's identity can be compromised in many different ways, especially through telephone scams and mail theft. Identity thieves can gain access to your mail and obtain valuable information such as your name, address, banking information, and even your social security number. As scary as it sounds, identity thieves can get a hold of your W-2 forms and actually file your taxes. Installing a locking mailbox at your residence would make it difficult for the average opportunistic mail thief to steal your mail. All right, that's it for today. If you have any topics you want us to cover, leave us a comment and we will see you next week. To around the peninsula we're now at the beautiful historic wayfarers chapel in rancho palace verdes since this glass church opened its doors back in 1951 millions of visitors have come to this very famous place a lot is happening here from worship services life celebrations and coming up on sunday april 22nd is the annual art show so coming up next we'll tell you all about the show and life here at wayfarers the art show is april 22nd 
uh, Sunday from 10 to 4. Um, it's Earth Day that day, but we're calling it Art by the Sea with Poetic Expression because we're um, also celebrating National Poetry Month, which is the month of April. So we'll be having uh, poetry in the chapel, poetry readings, and then an open mic session in the chapel. Um, our VIP guests will be Mary and um, Eric Wright. Eric is the son of Lloyd Wright, the chapel architect. And so we're very excited to have them here. They'll be in the meditation garden so people can come and say hello to them. And um, just lots going on, over 25 vendors, local artists, Catherine Stinnis, Don Crocker, Trish McCoy, just lots of lovely artists and many handmade crafters doing just great handmade stuff. If you purchase something, you can get a ticket and put it in for our basket giveaway and we're gonna have a great basket worth over $300 this year, so. Now they've added arts and crafts and stone painting and poetry and in the chapel and music, so it's really grown and I'm just, I'm so pleased. There's, there's not a better way to spend a Sunday afternoon to that Wayfarers Chapel art show and be looking out over the ocean. It's very special because it brings the community together. This is a, something we do for the community, and uh, it's different from everything else. And great artists are coming out, and you could purchase things, or you can be part of a little yoga session with me. You may ask, what does yoga have to do with art? Well, <clears throat> yoga is many things, as you know. It's a science, a philosophy, and a way of life, and it is art. And what it has in common with art is inspiration. And when you are combining motivation in, with intention, it becomes a very strong, strong thing that you're doing. So to become strong, you got to do it more than at the day of the art show. Will you be offering the community um, yoga up here? Yes. So um, third week of April. We're starting our regular two classes a week. Um, Wednesday class is going to be Kundalini, and Thursday class is going to be Gentle Yoga with me. We're here because we want to let the community know you've got an art show coming up. Talk about the fact that well, this chapel is here for the community. Absolutely. We have been uh, on this property uh, since about 1951. It was completed, and it was really uh, such a stunning site and uh, venue that uh, it has become uh, a real jewel of the community, and the community has been very involved in its uh, in the services and the variety of different things that have happened here. Some people, because it's such a popular wedding venue, some people believe that uh, it's more about weddings, but really that is not its primary focus and vision. It really is about uh, a spiritual understanding and um, a transformation in a physical world to see things from a spiritual perspective. When you look at um, Emanuel Swedenborg's writings, and of course he's uh, the person for whom this chapel exists. It's a national monument to Emanuel Swedenborg. Uh, and so the, his, his thought behind uh, faith and the journey of faith was paramount uh, in the existence of the denomination that um, is, a, is uh, the overseer of Wayfarer's Chapel. My question is, some call it the glass chapel, some call it the tree chapel. Is there an official word? <laughs> uh, I don't know if you could say that it's official, but certainly when it was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright Jr., uh, son of the more famous architect uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, it was designed to be the tree chapel. As we stand here with this magnificent chapel behind you, it, has been, it was built more than 60 years ago. How are, you, how are the efforts to preserve it, to keep it here? We are uh, have been actually for the last few years looking at uh, the need to uh, ensure the future of Wayfarers Chapel. It has been on this site for 66 years. We do have a couple of years annually, a couple of uh, weeks annually, uh, where we shut down to do. Um, restoration type work and we are uh, getting ready to uh, engage in uh, a yet undetermined date uh, with a, a major um, restoration project and so we are uh, looking for ways and means to uh, pay for the project that's going to be uh, necessary as we ensure uh, the chapel for the future.
When you're not at work in the art show that day, you're part of the visitor center. What's what happens in the visitor center? The visitor center, um, we have information about the chapel in the visitor center. Um, all of the staff is very knowledgeable about the history of the chapel, so people can ask us questions. And we also have a wonderful little gift shop that people can take home some great stuff. Half a million in 2017. We had uh, that many through our visitor center and we continue to have a lot of guests. Uh, so um, the, the beauty of the chapel is obvious. When you come onto the grounds, uh, it is just such a, a beautiful place to uh, enjoy. And uh, I, I appeal to people's love for keeping nature a part of a very uh, fast pace and busy uh, fast-paced and, and busy uh, life in general. This is a place to come and unplug for a while. This is a place where people can find clarity in times of, of uh, challenge. And, and so uh, I, I'm hoping that the, the appeal will be based on what people experience when they're here. So as we wrap it up here at the Wayfarers, to find out more about what's happening here and the upcoming art show, just log on to wayfareschapel.org. There's still more to come here on Around the Peninsula. Up next, we'll be traveling over to Ladera Linda, where things are hopping. Recently, there has been an increase of burglaries in our community. The Sheriff's Department and the Police Department are working hard to combat the problem, and they would like you to get involved. If you see something, say something. If you see something out of the ordinary in your neighborhood, take pictures and call the police. Be on the lookout for unidentified vehicles or persons in your neighborhood and write down license plate numbers and vehicle descriptions so you can give accurate information to law enforcement. Get to know your neighbors and form a neighborhood watch. Let neighbors know when you're out of town so they can watch over your house. Remember to lock your doors even when you're home. Secure gates and backyard access at all times. Keep valuables out of sight and arm your home with an alarm. Never let strangers inside of your home. Request identification from people who claim they need to work on your house or say they're from the utilities company. If you see something, say something. Let's prevent crime together. For more information on crime prevention, go to the website, lamita.lasd.org. Today I'm at Ladera Linda Community Center for the City of Rancho Palos Verdes annual egg hunt and you can bet everyone here is having an excellent time. Well today we're at the egg hunt extravaganza. It's one of my favorite events with the city. Uh, we have about a hundred kids signed up so today there's lots of fun photo opportunities with the big bunny. We got our bunny car. Um, we also have the goats here so a couple baby goats for them to feed some alpha alpha too. And then the egg hunt will be kicking off soon. We also have the docents Los Serenos de Point Vicente that we'll be putting on a puppet show. So there's lots of fun for the family and just a great time for everyone. We have about probably 15 volunteers today, um, about seven staff so it's really a team effort to get this happening and really make it enjoyable for everyone. So we appreciate all the work. We actually have some community members who come and bring stuff to help dress up our bunny car. So it really puts a special touch on the event. Uh, this, this is a lot bigger than it has been in the past. So I'm thrilled. And I know this is our community, folks. This is the Rancho Palos Verdes community. And look at all the children that are now back in Rancho Palos Verdes and more children will be coming. So this is the perfect location. And uh, I'm excited. I just wish my own grandchildren were here, but I will defer to our newest, youngest council member, Eric Alegria, because his three children are here today. So we'll let him get started with this event. Oh, this is wonderful for the community. In fact, my, my parents are in town from Washington State to see the action. And uh, we're looking forward to the egg hunt that's coming up in, a, in about an hour. I have three children of my own. They're going to be part of it. And it's just before 10 o'clock now, so the event hasn't even started. And we're already starting to see a number of people assemble. So exciting day for the community. So you're new on board in the council as of January. How's it going? <laughs> Wonderful. I love being on the council. love serving. We have a great council serving the community now. What, any family traditions this weekend being the holiday? 
Oh, well, certainly church uh, and a lot of eating. <laughs> so those are the two traditions in my family, and we're going to fulfill both of those certainly this weekend. Um, this is exciting for me because being a new councilman, I hadn't actually been to this event, um, although my son's 16 now, and then dragging him here to an event like this would be near impossible at this point. Uh, but uh, learning about it now and seeing all the people here from the community out here, it's exciting. And you said your favorite thing is are the goats. We love the goats. Uh, my wife is a huge fan of the goats. The first time uh, when we moved here about 15 years ago and noticed that the goats were chewing up the land uh, up near Marymount, uh, we got all excited. So that was one of the reasons that we love these hills up here because the goats are out here a lot. Um, well, here at Ladera Linda, we won't get too much into depth, but obviously this is becoming becoming before the council in the Ladera Linda Master Park Plan um, to make some major improvements here and basically create a new community center. What are your thoughts on that? Community, I mean, the community, it's, there's been a little bit of vice sniff, but just trying to get all the facts right and, and, and make it be a good thing for the community. Where are you going with this? Well, uh, so, so like you mentioned, we just recently had uh, had a meeting in regards to the new Ladera master plan, and we're kind of, the process is moving forward. Um, you can see from the number of people that are here today that there's a lot of residents that are looking for activities and things for this part of the, our community. Our city is a, a, big, a big community. We have 43,000 people um, and there's parks all over our city and it's very important to have areas for all of our residents to be able to come and attend and do things like uh, this egg hunt today. Um, we follow the city of Rancho Palos Verdes on Facebook and they advertise this event. We hadn't come last year um, because we were out of town so we were able to get tickets right before it sold out and we're so glad because it looks like it's going to be a really fun day. So you got your committee, who do you have with you? Um, this is Scarlett who is four and her twin sister Vivian and the big brother Henry who is six. Henry, what do you think of this? You having a good time? Mm -hmm. Are you going to look for eggs? Yeah. What's, what's in your basket? I got a bunny egg, um, um, a sheep egg, and a chick egg. I heard you can know how to hop like a bunny. Is that true? We got our basket. We're going to try to find as many eggs as we can. And we're going to try to get late into our bunny ears. Look at the camera. Yeah. Ah. All right, Emily, what's going to happen next? This is the most exciting part of the egg hunt. Yeah, this is the buildup. So we got these things here, the paper eggs. Each kid is going to run out there and collect as many as they can. And then they exchange their egg for a prize and then each age group has a gold and silver egg but the funny thing is is the gold and silver are only gold and silver on one side so they can't tell until they pick it up so that's get very fun how many eggs are out here i would say about 1500 eggs there's a lot it takes a lot of time but you know there's a lot of kids so we got to make sure we have plenty i found the paper eggs and i watched the pet fit show and i fed the goats and you found the silver egg uh-huh and i found the silver egg and i was so excited <laughs> I think we found the youngest bunny here, Emma, six weeks. Are you having a good time? We're having such a great time, yes, especially her older sister. <laughs> you said you live in Lanada Bay. This is your first time coming? This is our first time here, yeah. We're so excited. We've been talking about the egg hunt all week, so Emma may not quite fully get it this year, but we're excited, and she'll be probably running around next year. Oh, it's always so fun. We have such a great time. So you're an expert at this event? Absolutely. <laughs> My what, two little ones are for sure. What do you love about coming? You, 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 you've been here before. What do you like about this event? Um, it's pretty fun to be with the littler kids and to help them out. And you got your bunny ears? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you going to put them on for us? Sure. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's come every year. She's come every year since, I think, 2010 when they started it up again. Well, this is an extra special year for the city. This is our 45th anniversary. And uh, the city is going to be celebrating throughout the year with different events and different booths at um, next week. It'll be Whale of a Day. And then we'll have the 4th of July. And then, of course, we have our big event on September 7th, which is the actual date of incorporation. So it'll be fun and looking forward to it. I was mayor for the 20th. I was mayor for the 40th. And this is it, folks. Mayor for the 45th. I'm so, I'm really honored and humbled. I'm very grateful. So the annual Whale of a Day is coming up on Saturday, 
April 14th, and that's at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Parking will be at City Hall, and they'll shuttle bus you down and back up, um, and that's just a good time. And then we have the annual Meet the Goats, which is at Point Vicente Interpretive Center as well, on Saturday, April 22nd, and the event runs from 11 to 1. So you get to go inside, feed the goats, and then they'll also do a goat herding demonstration. So those are really cool. There'll be two during the day. Um, uh, following that event on May 19th, there'll be Kids to Parks Day, which is hosted at the Ladera Linda Community Center. And there's also a separate event at Point Vicente. It's a smaller um, Kids to Parks Day celebration, but we'll have some crafts and games there as well. All right, so we're going to wrap it up here at the Egg Hunt. And all I can say is, some bunny loves you. Thanks for watching Around the Peninsula. See you next time.